Michael. Hi, Roy. Hello, Michael. Yeah, it's nice to see you. Um, can I get some team news, please? Well, we've got two players, unfortunately, who are not going to be available. It's unfortunate because both were training last week, but um, we've lost Nathan Ferguson and we've lost Chris Richards for this game. But hopefully the injuries are not really a serious ones, so the prognosis is that we might get them back for next week. The goalies, though? Goalies no, they're good. All, both goalkeepers are back fit. When you got the call, uh, did it take much thinking, speaking to family? Tell us how it all went. It came as a big surprise, of course. And, uh, but I've got to say, it was a pleasant surprise in, in a way. One's never pleased to take over a job where someone's had to leave that job, so there's always that element that's not, not a great thing to have to come to terms with but Steve Parrish was very clear that you know this was going to happen and that he wanted me to, to come in for this period of time to, to take over the reins and when he pers persuaded me that it was something that they'd really thought through and wanted to do and uh, they thought that I was the one that they wanted to do the job for this two months, it didn't take much thinking about it at all and as far as my wife was concerned, she didn't make too many complaints either. And she was glad to see the back of me, I don't know. Well, when I was with you at Sky in January, you spoke so highly of Patrick. But you talked about Palace, it just felt like your <coughs> club, when you were talking about it. Did you, did you feel that as well, that that hence not being a difficult decision? Yeah, I mean, the, the time I spent here was, was, was very good, good years. I forged a very good relationship not only with the, the owners and, and the sporting director, but I think a lot of people around the place as well, and not least of all, uh, a large group of the players. So in terms of coming back in that respect, it wasn't a difficult decision to make. I wouldn't want to go as far as to say that and, and, and to you know, big up too much the fact that, as everyone knows, it was my boyhood club and it is a club that's always meant a lot to me, but I don't want to really go too much down that down that line. But it does mean, of course, that now when I'm back, things fit in quite seamlessly because people know me and they, they know how I like to work and I know so many of them. So it's not like when you sometimes come into a new club where you're working very hard to remember the names of the people around you. You know, it is in your blood, though, isn't it? We never really talked about retirement when you were here before. Would it have been Palace only, or would you have maybe considered other roles as the season went on? It's a very good question. I mean, I don't know how you answer it honestly. Um, I've accepted that I've retired, as it were, because that's what everyone's been saying. And if I walk down the street, people say to me, are you enjoying your retirement? But at the same time, I've never really felt old enough to retire, if the, if the truth is known. I, mean, I know that I am. I know my birth certificate tells me I am. But the way I feel doesn't really tell me that. So I suppose there's always been an opening there for uh, a project such as this one, um, whereby I know very clearly what the project is, what the objective is, why I'm there, and, and what's expected of me. Who knows, you know, there might be another one of them that comes up. But the thing is, I don't, I don't actively seek them. That's the thing. No one is out there on my behalf looking for these things. Uh, on both occasions, it's come my way, and I've had the choice, do I accept or do I not accept? And on both occasions, I've accepted. If it goes well, would you consider next season, or are you just purely focusing on the now? I'm purely focusing on the now. There was no discussion about that at all. Uh, I don't know what the Crystal Palace's plans are going forward. Knowing Steve and the owners as well as I do, I'm sure they've, they've got ideas and got plans going forward. They've asked myself and Ray to do a very specific job, work with this group of players and, and, and try to make certain that at the end of the season we are still a premiership team. And I like it that way. When I look at the Palace squad and, and you look at them now, I mean... You were really enjoying it out there. Have some of the players maybe forgotten just how good they are in terms of the attacking, the goals? The, you know? mm, that's a very good question, and I'd like to think that's the case. Um, it's so easy to lose confidence. It's so easy to let the, the black dog take over to some extent and you know, make you doubt all the things that you think you were good at doing. And really, our main task, as I see it, having taken over a group which is clearly stronger, certainly technically, than the one we left behind two years ago, 
is to make certain those players don't lose faith. They don't start thinking that we, we, we aren't capable because, as Palace showed in particular last season and even in the early part of this season, they are a good team and they, they can win games and they can produce good football. So we've got to get back to that somehow. Uh, but it's easy to say these things. It's an easy, an easy, uh, what's the right word? Subject to wax lyrical about, but it's another thing trying to get that to happen uh, and get those performances on the field. Two more quick ones from me. Um, it's obviously always a bit about when managerial changes, the fans. Have you got a message for them? I've got good feelings, me, good atmosphere on Saturday. Absolutely. I mean, I think that it's a two way process. We've, all, we've always had good fans here for as long as I can remember. And certainly during my four years here, the fans were a vital part of any sort of success that we had. And we knew we could count on them. We knew we had such loyal support. And it was a fervent support as well. So you knew that they had your back in some way. But of course, to get that type of support, we've got to give them something to feel that it's worthy of getting behind. So we must take that responsibility. We've got to make certain that on Saturday, they see a team that is every bit as committed, every bit as anxious to do well as they, the fans, are anxious for us to do well. But I am absolutely convinced that we will get a lot of help from them in these last five home games and even the away games. So uh, they, they are very much a weapon that I can't control, but at the same time, I'm really hoping that they will, will help us on our way. Uh, very finally, you're here a long time. Are there anything you'd left at the training ground or any of the, any offices? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No. There's a load of books there, but I, I think they came from Alan Pardew, really. <laughs> so I, I'd left them there. He might want them back one day. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, Roy. Okay, okay thank you. Um, Seb, Seb from PLP. Hi, Roy. Hi. Nice to see you. You too. Um, things didn't quite go to plan with Watford last season. Very despite, true. Despite your lengthy and experienced <laughs> career, did you learn anything from that that time at Watford? Well, you 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 do always learn, of course. That everyone knows that, but I'm afraid bad experiences or unpleasant experiences, like uh, going to try and save a club from relegation and then not succeeding, that that scars more than teaches you. Um, there's no question of that. But I've just got to try and make certain there that uh, it doesn't happen again because I know what a, a very painful and unpleasant experience it is for everyone, not least of all the fans of the club, the owners of the club, the players in the club and all the coaching staff. It, it, it affects an awful lot of people. So if anything, I'm determined here not to let that happen again. But if someone says to me, well, give us a guarantee, I'll, I'll say to them, this is football. There are no guarantees. <clears throat> we're in a fight. We're in a dog fight. We're, you know, we've got a slight advantage, but not a very big one. But we've got to make certain we do everything we can out there on the training field to prepare the team, and then they on the match day to win matches. And certainly, I won't be thinking very much about that experience at Watford. I've had to put that behind me and concentrate fully on this one. Um. You say you've got a bit of a, a margin, but you're 12. Have you ever been in such a tight battle for relegation with so many teams being able to go down from, from today? No, I think this season's exceptional in that respect. You don't normally have almost a whole bottom section of the table all fighting to avoid relegation. And you certainly don't see so many teams which... Most people would say they can't get relegated, they're too big a club to get relegated. So I think that's unusual in that respect this year. Um, so we go into the last 10 games with a very exciting scenario at both ends because we still aren't 100% certain who the champion's going to be and who the top four are going to be. So there's an awful lot to play for in these last 10 games. But I've got to say, as far as I'm concerned, the only games that will really interest me are the ones that we play and maybe watching the games that our opponents play to get some idea of how good or uh, they are. What do you think a team like Crystal Palace calls up on you for a, 
a relegation battle? What is it about you that could work and could keep Palace up? No, no. You'd have to ask the, the people who appoint me for, for those jobs that question. I'm not going to sit here and uh, extol what I consider virtues because I know that every time you extol virtues, you know, you're liable to uh, open yourself up to people pointing out your vices or your, your failings. So um, that's something which really you'd have to turn to Steve Parrish and the other owners of the club to ask that question. All I can say is that I didn't expect to be asked but when I was asked and when they persuaded me that they thought I would be the person needed to do the job, they had their reasons, I accepted that and happily accepted to take on the job. Final one from me. There's a few new players who have come in since you were last here. Um, are you excited about any of those, those new players? You can do different things compared to last time? Well, the team, the team I left behind in particular... In that last season, we had nine players out of contract and we had goodness knows how many over the age of 30. So we were an ageing team and we we bought in Ebretti really with a view to trying to start the process of getting more youth into the team, getting more legs, basically, I suppose you'd call it, into the team as well as the technique. Now that's continued. So all of the players who've come in really are in the Ebretti category and that's going to make a big difference especially seeing as from what I've seen so far they're also all very very good technicians so uh, this team is capable of a, a much more energetic uh, approach perhaps than we were able to provide especially in the last season or season and a half uh, and not least what I say because players were out of contract and when you have a lot of players out of contract it's not a not a good thing to, to be going into matches asking them to give their best and to put their bodies on the line when they don't even know where their next job's coming from. So you're more confident this time round with the squad that you More have. confident than when? Than no, last time when you had players out of contract. Well, last time was all right. Last time, last time at this stage of the season we had 38 points. So I was certainly much more confident, yeah, because after 27 games we had 38 points. So I was pretty pretty certain after 27 games we weren't going to go down. So I was very confident, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> um, BBC. Yep, that's, right. that's it. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, what is the first thing, from a managerial point of view, that you're going to focus on that possibly you think could have been tightened up a little bit under Patrick? Well, I'm not going to talk about things that I think could have been tidied up before I came here, because I don't know what needed tidying up. That would be for other people to, to decide. I've got a very clear idea of what I think I and they need to do, and that is to clarify for the players what exactly we expect from them, to make sure that when we send the team out to play that we've done our level best to give them the information they need to play the game, to be able to trust in their ability, in their performance, to play that position, to play that role to feel they can trust their fellow players, that you know they're also on board with the type of things that the team wants to do. And perhaps most importantly of all, we need to try and remove as much as we can the fear and the spectre of relegation and to really encourage people to try and once again believe that we are good players, we are a good team. We've shown that uh, on many occasions in the very, very recent past. Our current situation isn't good, we're on the back of a, a bad run, but we must not lose faith in ourselves, we must not lose faith in our fellow players to, to do the job, and we must make certain that we keep our spirits as high as possible, and that we produce on the field of play the level of energy, the enthusiasm, the work rate, the desire to inspire the crowd. Because if we can do that, the crowd can be an extra man for us. But we can't expect the crowd to do that off their own bat. They've got to be inspired by us. So that's our task. Again, everything I'm saying here is so easy to say. It's not so easy to achieve. But that's what we're going to be working on. You mentioned that camaraderie between the team. Obviously, you need that to get out of the dogfight that you say 
Palace and so many other teams are in, but tactically, have you had enough time here at the club to think about the formations or the areas which you're going to look to improve on? Yes. Um, but I'm realistic. I mean, to, to, to get a really well-organised team and a team that you, you feel totally comfortable, fully understands everything and they've got a very clear idea of what's expected of them as an individual, as a team player, that's not five training sessions or six training sessions, whatever it might be, especially seeing as, to be fair, three, three quite important members of the team haven't even been there during that period of time. So we've got to be realistic. But I'd like to think we've made a start. I'd like to think that the way we're working has been accepted by the players and that they will continue to, to get behind that way of working. And we've now got to be careful that they don't start thinking that every time they make a mistake, they're going to be criticised because we're going to say to them, well, in training, we told you that's not what we're trying to do. They've got to have the freedom to play themselves. And then, within the next two months... I'm hoping that the team you'll see on Saturday, at least in terms of organisation, will be better in two months' time, because that's our job. Final question from me. In this run-in, you obviously know the games you're gonna, you, you've got coming up, but as a manager, I know the message to the players will be you win every game. But are you looking at that chunk of games left and realistically thinking how many points you, you're going to get out of, out of what's remaining? Yeah, it's a, I've had that question many times in my career and I've never known how to answer it. So, I mean, I'm sad to say I still don't really know how to answer it. But it just reminds me of a, a story though, that a friend of mine took a job in Sharjah when I was working as, with the national team in Dubai and the owner took him to one side with a, a fixture list and he actually went through the game. He said, well, we'll get a point there. We'll win that one. We won't get anything there. No, that would be difficult. We'll get a point there. And we're finished with 30 odd points. And my face said to him, Well, you don't really need me, do you? <laughs> Thank you very much. And I mean, that's basically it. Thank you. Thanks. Ian from Um When you were, came back to Hunter Park back in the last season with Watford, you got an um, amazing reception and you went around the ground. Did you think you'd be back? No. And of course, it didn't do me any good with Watford as such, because of course, their fans really expected me to. to to hate Crystal Palace, which was difficult. I mean, I didn't expect that reception, to be honest. It, it was a it was a very nice reception to get, and of course, when that happens, you have to be you have to be flattered, you have to be pleased uh, about it. But no, the answer to the question is simple. I did not expect to be back. I thought that I'd left Crystal Palace already virtually a year ago, and this offer to come back now came as a, a really big surprise. Um, but it's an offer that I've been happy to accept. How will you keep your emotions on Saturday? Because you're bound to get a equally good homecoming. Well, you don't know that. I mean, the fans at the moment, I would think, are a little bit unsure of everything because it's a big upheaval for them. Um, certainly at the game, I've only seen one game live, and strangely enough, that was at the <laughs> the insistence of Man City, who, who's... Uh, CEO from Melbourne City was making a rare visit to London to watch the game and got me an invite to go there as a Manchester City guest. But I hadn't even expected to see that game. But certainly the game I saw and then previously working for the TV, the Fulham game, the fans were superb on both occasions supporting the team. One hopes that's what it's going to be like again because as I've said now several times already, they are a crucial factor. If we do stay up, I'm pretty certain at the end, the players and I will be saying thank you fans for the support and help you gave us. <clears throat> I think everyone's looking at it like Palace are in a desperate situation, akin to when you were at Fulham, where at one stage you were actually half-time relegated at Man City, but still turned it around that season. Um, that isn't the case. And actually, your opposite number on Saturday is probably under more pressure, and his team are under more pressure than you are. Well, he's been working with them a long time. A, he's a good good manager and a good coach, and he's been working with them a long time. And B, they do have a lot of very good players, so it's unusual to see Leicester City in the position they're in. I would think that he's probably able to be more sanguine about the situation than I can be, because I think he must know that with this group of players, with the work we've done together, the way we know each other... The, the, the clarity we have, what we need to do and are capable of doing, 
I would think it would stop him feeling too much pressure in that respect. But at the same time, we all know, the, we've seen this year, so many managers have lost their job in the Premier League. That must be a record, I would think. I don't normally remember seeing half the managers change during the course of a season. So pressure, I suppose, is there for everybody. So I'm pretty certain that it's easy for me to say what I'm saying about Brendan, but it might not be what he's actually feeling himself. You've mentioned a few times about what you need to do, tactics, team selection, regarding Saturday and going forward. From an outsider's point of view, it's simple, just score goals. Palace have goals, mm. score goals. How, how are your team going to score more goals? Well, that's also to do, of course, with the, with the messages we're trying to give them out onto the training field. On the training field, it's also to do very much with, with confidence. And confidence, unfortunately, comes from winning matches and scoring goals, and that's not what's been happening. But our job has got to be to try and circumvent that lack of confidence which comes when you play lots of games and don't score and every week you read about we're not scoring enough goals. We've got to try and persuade them that you are capable and you will score goals. But, you know, to get score them, we're going to have to do certain things in the way we play and you're going to have to make certain maybe changes or more efforts in the way you're playing to get those goals. So it's, once again, in these conferences, especially when you haven't done them for a period of time, everything seems so easy to say, but you know how difficult it is to, to produce. Um, but I'm confident that the players will start to score goals. I think there are goals in the team. And uh, if we don't score them, we'll have to accept a a drought for a bit longer and a bit of criticism for a bit longer but I'm convinced that with the way I've seen these boys play there's goals in the team Final two I know you're only taking every single game in, in isolation but your next six fixtures you couldn't have handpicked them better they're all teams around you if you were to get points against them you're, you're pretty much safe because you'll be denying them points as well mm. is, that, is that how you see it or would you say I'm being a bit simplistic no, I think that's that's that that is the you know the common view, and I, I can't disagree with it or deny it. The big question always is sometimes: is it easier to play against teams in the same position as yourself? You know, fighting for their lives, fired up, you know, desperate not to lose, or is it better to play teams who don't have quite so much to play for, and have had a good season and can take their foot off the gas? Now, I've. I've, I've contemplated that uh, question for many, many years and I still don't know the answer. And the last one, if you're the godfather of Crystal Palace, the godson <laughs> is Wilfred Zaha, is it down to you to convince him to stay beyond this season when you may or may not be here next season? No, it's not up for, for me to do it. Obviously, with my interest in the club and with my admiration for Wilf, I would like him to stay. So I hope that from the club's point of view, that he does accept the offer that's on the table and decides his future lies here. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, all I want from Wilf is to help the team to stay in the league. And if he does that, I'll just wish him well, whatever happens.